you hear me all right? Yeah, can you have a little louder? A little louder? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's always a problem with me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to introduce uh, Chris Giro, uh, filmmaker, director, writer, composer. Uh, his film in the festival is The Sound of Us, which is marketing here, plays right after this panel at 4 o'clock. So make sure you go over and see that. He had a film at, at Breck uh, several years, I think it's 2016, called Meet uh, Nathan East for the Record, which was an awesome film. It won Best Documentary for Music, and uh, I think it's won several awards along the way. It's the festival circuit. Uh, it, all, it just so happens that I have this lined up like you guys sat down. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Entirely coordinated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you saw my notes. Uh, and next is Alexander Jeffrey. He is a filmmaker, writer, director uh, of the film Multibella, which is playing at 7 o'clock tonight, so make sure you catch that also. Uh, he's also, he and Chris both had films in the 2016 Film Festival, and they both won awards. So, well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'm old 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 there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then next is uh, Ben Hess. He is, uh, mm -hmm. has a music, two music videos at the festival, Irene and I've Been Waiting. Uh, and he's had uh, some success in the festival circuit with a short film called Man. And now he has a, a film out called Symptom Symptoms May Include Shortness of Breath. It's a mouthful. <laughs> I regretted that title as soon as I put it on paper. <laughs> And then uh, Stimson Sneed is also a music videographer. And he has a film in the, the festival, The Golden Man. And he's had success over, uh, over the years uh, with a film called Spirit, The Martian Story, a short film. So again, welcome. Uh, so I will, I will, you know, this will be, I want this to be a, a conversation us on the panel, and, and you guys also. Uh, just jump in uh, if you have something to add to the topic. The topic is uh, strumming the heartstrings, how music has inspired us. So I'll start off with a question, and I believe you guys think I prepped you a little bit. We studied for the test. <laughs> Good. Uh, so the, the first question is, uh, thinking of music, what inspired you? And we can just go down the line. Uh, what is what is thinking of music? What inspired you before and during the creation of your film? Start down there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the Golden Man, that's actually a song from the band My Fellow Robot, who is, for the record, a fantastic band. They've just had their second album out, and it was fairly easy to pick my point of inspiration as it was going to be this specific song from the band. <laughs> so I got very, very lucky in that it's a very good song. And it's my type of song and the kind of thing I would honestly groove on regardless of whether or not I was making a video for them. So in the case of that film, it was very easy to decide what was going to inspire me, it was that. <laughs> And just to, I guess to continue on that thought a little bit, uh, especially with music videos, um, you know, a lot of times they, they come into being because an artist will seek out a filmmaker to make a music video. And sometimes they already have a song picked out that they want to do, um, and other times they'll, you know, the question will be, well, what song do you think we should do? Um, I love it when they ask what song um, I think they should do, because then I get to get my input a little bit into what the end product is going to eventually be based on the song. Um, one, of the, one of the things I always, always, always look for in choosing a song, if that's the case, is there has to be um, some emotional component to it. Um, there's a, uh, the best films, the best music videos have that, hopefully, a moment or more than one moment of connection with whatever the audience is on some emotional level. So that's one of the biggest things I look for. Yeah, so with Multibella, I think I was telling you a little earlier, Steve, that um, the film is is about uh, a singer-songwriter and a poet who meet in Terramina, but it was also written with two very specific people in mind. Um, that was Andrea Von Campen, who's the singer-songwriter in it, and then Paul, uh, who's sitting right there, 
Um, and he, he wrote all the original poetry for the film in addition to being the, the lead actor. So with Andrea's music, she was actually writing the original songs for the film as we were writing the script. Um, and the very first song that she sent me was an old Stephen Foster song, her cover of it called Hard Times Come Again No More. And so that was the first song that was incorporated into the script. It, it, other sections were just like, Andrea writes a brilliant song for this <laughs> section of the script, and, and we'll figure it out later. Um, so she was, she was composing the music, and that music was definitely inspiring the screenplay throughout the process of writing it. And prior to even like starting writing, I've just been a huge fan of her music um, for quite a while. We've made some music videos together, and um, I, I got to know her brother in university, and one day he sent me a Facebook message and was like, hey, you should really check out my sister's music. Um, I think it would be great for the types of movies that you make. And I started listening to it, and I think she was brand new on the scene at that point. Um, and she actually just had a new album come out, but I, I just kind of fell in love with her writing style and the type of music that she made. Um, and her voice, and her voice is beautiful. And and when then we started talking about like film stuff, and you know films like Inside Lewin Davis and Once inspire her, and they're definitely big inspirations for me and for this movie. So we we kind of jived um, from a creative level too on the filmmaking side of things. Yeah. Uh, the Sound of Us, which is the film that we've brought here, um, is. story about what music is to all of us in this world right now. So as we all know, we've been through some pretty rough times on so many levels, and uh, uh, what inspired me to make the film was um, the goodness that I know we all share at the genetic level because of what music is to each other. The Sound of Us is nine separate segment film performances and or stories of extraordinary people doing extraordinary things through music. So what actually inspired me was um, a very, very personal uh, journey in, in doing it. Um, I composed all of the all of the films that I make, unless I'm making something for you know, an artist or what have you. And, and, um, and so I have a, a bit of an advantage in, in I already know in my head how it's going to flow, what the, you know, what the, you know, what a, a lot of the, the components of it. And, and I attempted, or we attempted uh, to explain why we are all in this together. And by the end of the film, uh, I think we do a pretty decent job in beating you up pretty badly. <laughs> what, what inspired me to do it was um, I really struggled with, I, I had a young daughter who uh, just had uh, been diagnosed with leukemia when she was two and just, uh, we were still in the middle of that COVID came in, all, all of, a lot of my friends, a lot of your friends, all were unemployed, everybody, nobody knew what to do. There was a lot of, you know, racial stuff and political stuff, and uh, and I found myself kind of imploding into it, and my son said, you know, Dad, make a film, go out and be useful, <laughs> you know, because he was just watching me go, going inward, and so um, I had written a, a, a piece of music that had um, won a bunch of awards for another film that I was directing the year before, and that kind of it's the song. It's at the end of the title uh, and credit, and, and uh, it's called "I Have You," and it was written for my wife and for my daughter, our youngest daughter, and um, and it kind of stayed with me the entire time. And I realized that through music we had each other, and that was the genesis of why we we made this little film. So it, it, it was a very it was a very, very personal thing that I knew that if we just mashed together this idea that it would become, you know, bigger than life. So that's what the, the inspiration was. Uh, so I'm always curious about, like, <clears throat> when you, you have a song and you start to add or think about the imagery to that, like, through the course of, like, listening to the song, how you, this would be a great image, this would be a great image. 
I don't know that that applies so much to you as a documentarian, but as a you know as narrative fiction, uh, it's like where do you start? Where do you grab that first image? Or you know you're trying to tell a story, of course, because you know, songs tell stories. Uh, uh, and <laughs> so where do you grab that image? Working with the songwriter, or do they say? You're the filmmaker, you, you know, that's, that's your lane. So that's just a general question, anybody that wants to. Oh, I went first last time. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> um, I, I can speak to that a little bit with uh, the music video Irene that played yesterday. Um, uh, it's a singer-songwriter, uh, folk Americana, um, singer-songwriter out of Nashville and Nebraska. And um, the song is very, very clearly about domestic violence. And it also talks a lot about how um, the songwriter, the singer is, is a character in the story as well, and how um, her and the title character, Irene, were childhood friends. So um, it got me to thinking um, about really trying to show, um, show that connection and sometimes the disconnection between um, our, you know, us, us as children and us as adults, and how see things very differently as a child um, and then once you become an adult as we all know um, sometimes it's it's nice to look back and, and wish you could see things like you did as you were a child um, and that's kind of the, that's kind of the, the imagery that I'm trying to I was trying to get across in the video um, I was ac actually able to employ my four-year-old daughter to play the little girl in the video <laughs> um, she didn't have much of a choice <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah it's, it's it ended up being pretty powerful to the point where we, we won't even let her watch it because it essentially shows her you know, just in juxtaposition with uh, a domestic violence victim who's going through this you know, pretty, pretty tragic experience. So um, I think we, we were able to, to show what we were going for pretty well, but, but that, that's, that's where that imagery came forth and I, I was really trying to show um, you know, how you look at things as a child versus how you see things as an adult. One of the great things about music videos and any project really where you, the music is the starting point and not something that's going to be added as you go is it music is mood and that is the first thing you can get from a song and that's the first thing without even listening to what the lyrics are you can get an emotional beat off of it and where you're going with that in the case of golden man it is this sweeping electronica orchestral this very very gentle piece music wise that it's all kind of all warm feels so polar opposite of your <laughs> <laughs> um, and so and then the lyrics ended up backing up that mood as well so it was not something that was even in juxtaposition to that so having that starting point lets you get creative and do things that inspire you so for me one of the things I've been on a big kick for a while is a band world decay and finding abandoned places broken things and photographing them as though they were pretty, treating them as things that I really like. And so the pitch I made to the band, because it's such a positive song, is let's set this in the post-apocalypse, let's take it to the worst extreme we can think of, and have it be very happy. It's a 1950s nuclear family, pun very much intended, <laughs> just being a very happy family when all is said and done. The, the entire plot is just a little boy is being a poop, ruins his sister's toy and has to make up for it. But and I like that and I like that with music videos you can do that kind of weird stuff as long as you're really following what the mood is telling you to do. Yeah, it's it's tough because with ours like the it was all the music was always supposed to be diegetic to some degree and incorporated into the storytelling like once in Inside Moon Davis. So I don't know that the music necessarily inspired any specific visual sequences, but I will say that like because we were um, the, writing the music alongside the script and, and able to listen to it like on the flight over to Terramina and on the location scout, it definitely inspired ideas. I mean, we, we, did, we shot this very documentary style. Um, and, and so, uh, but I, one of the things that we did was um, while we were there shooting, you know, every night I would get back to the my room and I would throw together just shots from the day and set it to Andrea's music. And 
that and those kind of sequences set to her music were kind of the key to us that this is kind of working, kind of king up. You're saying it's setting the mood, it's setting the tone for the story, and so that was that was an early clue for us that like we felt like we were getting what we intended on the page. Um, that her music and the visuals were jiving in a way that that made sense. Um, but you know, I mean, we were we were also discovering stuff when we got there, stuff that we had you know hadn't seen on the location scout and hadn't thought of in the scripting process. So it was it was definitely a, a give and take organic process. 